Zimbabwean Finance Minister uh, Professor Mtuli Nkube has kicked off a global roadshow to win over investors and highlight policy changes in the Zimbabwean economy. He met uh, officials from uh, South African fund manager Alan Gray on uh, earlier this week, in fact on Wednesday actually, according to a post on his Twitter account. The objective of the pitch is to position Zimbabwe as an economy and investment destination in recovery. Still in Zimbabwe, local banks and businesses uh, could face fines and suspensions if involved in what the government describes as profiteering off the hard currency it makes available at auctions. President Emerson Mwangagwa uh, threatened unspecified actions against, quote, sharks in the financial sector. He also issued warnings to private companies he blames for undermining his efforts to turn around an economy plagued by annual inflation of, wait for it, 241 percent and foreign currency shortages. Uh, and still in Zimbabwe, the billionaire and businessman uh, Dr. Strive Masiwa is reportedly uh, investing an amount or looking to invest about $100 million to build a data center uh, in, here in Nigeria. The uh, facility is expected to boost capacity in storage and easy access to data locally to help resolve issues relating to poor network and browsing experiences caused by far-fetched data centers, help include, introduce more cloud services uh, in the nation and assist businesses and boost investment opportunities and many more. So joining us to discuss these uh, headlines is uh, the CEO of Alpha African Advisory, Sayade Okoli. You're very welcome. Morning. Very well. Uh, we've got some tweets. Let's take a look at. I think we mentioned the tweets already from uh, Professor Ontule, where he's uh, he was meeting with in investors. He put them on his uh, on his Twitter account. Not only did he meet with, um, yes, there we go. Zimbabwe Global Investor Roadshow. I met with the executive of Coronation. That's another company, a leading asset manager. We engaged in a robust discussion on the Zimbabwe economy, and they expressed positive sentiments about their current investments in Zimbabwe and general prospects, and had good ideas. I think there's another tweet. Yeah, there he is. He posted an image this time. Uh, in Cape Town, he met with investors. That's Alan Gray, and uh, one of the uh, largest portfolio investors in Zimbabwe and African markets. We marketed Victoria Falls Stock Exchange as a hard currency investment platform, and there he is with his hand up, right in the middle of the Alan Gray investor. So, you're an, you're the CEO of an asset manager. You would theoretically be one of these folks he would talk to. Um, what are the do's and don'ts uh, of an investor roadshow? Okay, so the first thing to remember is that investors are looking for returns. Mm. And they recognize they've got to take risk, but the returns they expect need to essentially be commensurate with the level of risk ah. that they'll be expected to take. So what I would expect to see from an investor roadshow is um, the finance minister, for example, showing me a very clear path to me generating returns and also a risk mitigation plan so that the risks which we are, which, which we can already foresee, right. um, at the very least, there are clear plans to address them. Um, talk less of, obviously, the, the risks which we can't foresee. Okay, well, you know, speaking of risks, <laughs> oh boy. Zimbabwe has triple-digit inflation, and, and we're here in Nigeria screaming about 18%. They're, they got 200, I mean, triple-digit inflation, FX shortages like you've never seen. Um, how, how, I mean, uh, how do you think the roadshow is going to turn out? Well, since you've mentioned the risks that, you know. I think it's fair to say the finance minister has his work <laughs> cut out for him. Um, not least because he is, you've spoken about some of the economic challenges, yeah. but it's also in the background of um, significant political risk mm. at the moment in that you, it's unsettled. Right. Um, politically. The opposition is in disarray and you have accusations that the ruling parties, and PF, have been doing all to essentially undermine and, you know, just heavy-handed government using heavy-handed tactics to keep the opposition um, hamstrung. Right. So <laughs> there are a lot of risks that he will have to give very good explanations as to how they're going to be addressed. And I know that part of what he's been speaking about are the plans to, you know, achieve, you know, they've um, experienced a recession in 2019 and right. 2020. 2020 obviously is no surprise, as right. so many different countries, but 2019 as well. Um, but the point he is making is that the new government have been putting in place, you know, better economic policies to turn the nation around. You've mentioned the high inflation rate, et cetera, et cetera. 
He's talking about targets of bringing inflation down to between 3 and 7% by 2025. Investors are going to... It's one thing to say what you intend to do. It's another to do it. It's another to say how, you, how are you going to achieve this. Right. And they would want to see a plan where that actually looks achievable. Well, oh, like you said, he's got his work cut out for him. I want to ask you about Econet. Um, what, what the president Mang, uh, Mangag, Mangagwa uh, saying that they were undermining the FX auctions. So what people were doing, they were using Econet's mobile money to uh, get foreign exchange out of the country. And I, I don't know, it's almost like a survival instinct thing. What, what, what do you make of, I don't know if I want to call it ingenious or whatever, but what do you make of that situation and the signal it sends out? I think that it's... You really cannot legislate against basic economic principles, Aha. such as supply and demand. If the demand for foreign exchange is in excess of supply, either the pricing changes or people will find different ways of accessing the limited reserves, um, foreign exchange reserves there are. Mm. So it's not a surprise that this is happening. But you're absolutely right. How they handle businesses sends a very strong signal to investors. And as we discussed last, last Friday, what investors like to see is, basically, they don't like uncertainty. Right. Uncertainty means risk. Risk means higher um, ex um, return expectations. As, you know, let's talk about risk-adjusted returns. Right, right. Um, so it's got to be handled well. So the government did not come across as erratic and unpredictable. Um, maybe this is because of the present situation they have. Could they have waited until things were better to go on this roadshow? Or is it just with, what, with where things are, he just had to go now? With all the questions you say he has to answer, could, could he have waited or he, he has no choice? I must admit, I do wonder what informed the decision to go out now. I know that he was recently quoted as saying that... Um, that the economy is showing signs of improvement. Right. But that was having inflation go down from about 360 something percent in January to 320 something percent <laughs> in February. Well, maybe. <laughs> so you do have to wonder. About the timing, right? Yes. Gosh, okay. Um, I want to ask you about uh, a billionaire, uh, Miss Yawa, who is um, reportedly looking to build this 100 million dollar uh, data center, possibly in Nigeria. Um, is, he also, is he also motivated by returns because of Nigeria's large population, cell phone penetration and all that good stuff? Absolutely. Yeah? I believe he is for profit, <laughs> not, not, not for profit. So absolutely return. But remember that Strive and Sibiria is not um, new to Nigeria. Right. This is not his first foray. Mm. Remember there was Econet in the early days in the 2000s. Um, one of the early winners of the, um, the mobile network licenses. Yes. So he's done business in Nigeria before. There's definitely a data center opportunity. But having said that, we already do have some data centers, and I'm sure there are plans to expand. So I'd, I'd like to understand a bit more about the 100 million, what exactly they're going to do, and what they're going to do differently. They've spoken about not just the size of the data center, but the technology they plan to, to utilize. So I'm keen to hear more. Are you, um, I guess, excited about where telcos are going? MCN recently um, valued their, okay, you know what, we've run out of time. So let me use these last 20 seconds to thank you, the CEO of Alpha African Advisory, Sanya Okoli, for joining us and telling us, talking to us about matters in Zimbabwe. And we wish the finance minister the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you so much.